Okay. Um, mm. Can everybody see this? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you can recognize it very easily as the uh, the uh, meetup, the weekday uh, meetup, which. Uh, Can everybody else mute, mute while Mort's talking, please? Thank you. Where is the... Um... Wait, so far you only see the Amita, right? Yeah, right. I see the first uh, section of the Amita. Okay, I need... Where'd it go? I'm, I'm losing... Oh, here we go. Uh, new share. I don't want off. So, anyway, can you see this now? Making personal requests in the week they should want to ask. Nope. Wait a minute. You can't. You, you can see this one. It says making personal requests. Yeah. We. Yeah. Yes. We see it. Okay. Um, yes, quite clear. Okay, good. The, this, the, this making personal requests, uh, is the, is coming from our friends, uh, at the Halakha hotline once again. Um, I'm, I'm glad I'm starting to get this email. I mean, it's giving me things to, to, to actually to, to think about and to say, oh, gee, we could talk about that on Monday morning. Uh, <clears throat> actually, this was a two-part mailing. That's why I uh, cut out the summaries and put it onto one page. They looked at the question and said, can we make a personal request in the weekday Amida? Okay, that's why I have uh, a copy of the Amida on the screen here. And the question is really an age old one that um, <coughs> excuse me, the rabbis have debated over the years um, the difference between between um, communal prayer and personal prayer. And if you look at our liturgy and the way that we've structured our davening, clearly over the years, the rabbis have favored, or it's, they seem to have favored the idea of fixed prayer. Uh, as many of you know, the the tradition says that each of the three daily services were started by the by the um, by the by the patriarchs. Is anybody not familiar with that uh, tradition? Okay, the um, the there, uh, let's see, so Avraham was supposed to be the first one to start Shachrit. Uh, Yitzchak was, was Mincha and Yaakov was Mariv. Briefly, the sources were that um, at the beginning of the Akedah, the story of Avraham taking Yitzchak to offer as a sacrifice, uh, it says they got up early in the morning and um, they got ready to, uh, to, to go on their journey. And there's, there's inferences in the text that they took a little bit of time to do something, whatever that something was. The rabbis looked at it and says, well, they daven. How can they start on a journey without, without davening first? So we get shachrit out of that. Later on, Avraham um, sends his servant Elimelech to find a wife for, um, for Yitzchak. 
and it says when they approached their, the Elimelech and um, it's Rivka, right? Um, were approaching their home. Um, Yitzchak was out in the fields. Again, the rabbis look at the text and, and read into it that he was meditating out in the field or in more uh, traditional wording, he was davening. Therefore, it, and it was clear from the, the uh, context that it was the afternoon and therefore we have Mincha. Um, Mariv is uh, when Yaakov was uh, s struggling with the angel. Uh, the angel, uh, the fight was during the night and um, before the angel left, um, they, uh, <laughs> he blessed them. In other words, they, they daven together. And there we have Marev. Um, that's the Midrash, you know, goes into that. And uh, the rabbis have uh, kept that going all through the years. They're nice stories, but clearly we know historically um, the services had a kind of a much different uh, type of, of, of uh, origins. Um, and we've talked about that on other times. So the issue that was raised here in our, in the Halacha hotline is if we have all these, um, our, you know, a fixed sidur of prayers, we have a regular order of prayers and the, um, and when we, was it yesterday during our shmoo, someone said that they're, they look at old uh, sidurim from, that have been passed down from uh, through the generations and see that what's in those sidurim is just like what we have in our sidur. Uh, am I correct in remembering that? Yeah, yes, I, I did say that. Yes, which I thought was a wonderful sentiment. And, um, and just want to indicate, yes, you know, we have these uh, sidurim that uh, go back as far as uh, printed, um, printed books go uh, and some other uh, manuscripts that were, you know, before that. Um, but this is all not to say that the rabbis did not take into account what personal prayer could be or should be. Um, I want to just uh, relate two instances that uh, happened in the last couple of weeks. A um, week and a half ago, Carmi and I were at these Zoom bris of a new cousin. Um, the Moel and the parents and the baby were together uh, in the parents' home in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, everybody else was on Zoom, uh, including the grandparents. Um, the maternal grandparents were in Efrat, if you're familiar with the, uh, I, I guess I have to use the word settlement, but the cities on the, uh, in the Shtachim, in the, uh, in the West Bank, uh, they live in Efrat, which is the large, I believe it's the largest city there. Um, and they're clearly on the, uh, I, I guess I wouldn't insult anybody if I say they're clearly on the from side. Uh, the grandfather is, um, is a BT, you know, a Baal Teshuvah. Um, you know, he's, he's a nice guy, I really like him. So I can talk like this. Uh, you know, he's a guy who saw the light um, at one point. The fact that he married a, a cousin who was a, also very firm helped him along, but he's become very firm in his personal practice. Um, and he was supposed to read the part of the the bris ceremony where they confer the name upon the baby. Well, in the, um, in the Sidurim that have it, that part is, uh, starts off with the 
with the Bore Pri Hagasen. And then you go into the paragraphs that, uh, that recites the name. Well, the Moral, as he was doing his usual thing, and of course, uh, he was not using the uh, text because he's done so many of them, he knows it all by heart already. And he went and recited the Bore Pri Hagafen. Well, the grandfather then went bananas. I was supposed to say the Bore Pri Hagafen. How can I, how can I say this other thing if I don't say the Bore Pri Hagafen? Well, the Moyle tried to calm him down and said, anybody can make a Bore Pri Hagafen anytime for any reason. Go ahead, just say it. Um, you know, ultimately he uh, he proceeded, but he did not say the Bore Piagoffin because the model already did it. You know, uh, we haven't talked to him since. I don't know if he's gotten over it, um, but the rest of us were going, oh no, you know, what's this all about? Um, but in any event, he was so fixed on the given structure of what it should be, he was. Um, a little bit, um, shall I say, bent out of shape. Um, trying to think what was the other, I'll get back to it. Um, I know there was something else happened that, uh, that we deviated. There was something here in the meeting where we deviated from the normal procedure. And about, uh, when I think about it, but anyway, Let's look at what our uh, Halakha guys say. All right. So last, in the last week one, it said they, um, they looked at the Halakha of making personal requests in the uh, Shmon Esrei or the Amida. Um, so some of their conclusions they made last week is inserting personal requests in the Shmona Esrei can enhance one's davening immensely. So it's clear that the, the traditional approach to, uh, to adding prayers to the Amida is fine. You know, you, you, know, you can do it. Uh, you know, we, we certainly do it within the structure of the service. Uh, you know, how we make the uh, Misha Berach for the Cholim. Um, we can make a Misha Berach for a whole bunch of different reasons. We, uh, we can bench Gomel. Um, all these are really personal reflections that we uh, intersperse among the communal uh, passages that we use in the sitter. So off, offhand, you know, we're going to say right away that the idea of adding personal prayers is not, um, is not frowned upon, nor is it uh, against any halakhic consideration. Okay, one may and should ask for both physical and spiritual needs. Okay. I think that one's, uh, you know, pretty obvious. Um, if not, you know, let me know. Um, if necessary, one may, may make requests in a language other than Hebrew. Uh, I like this one because uh, I, I used, when I used to uh, teach a basic uh, introduction to Judaism class, I always used to say, well, it's okay, you can use any language. After all, God created all the other languages. He clearly understands, he or she clearly understands them. Um, so and that one's fine. One may, one may not make personal requests in the first three or last three brachot of the Shemona Esrei. Okay, looking now at the uh, Amida, that means here, uh, this page, the first three brachot, which are on this page, the first one is the Avot, uh, this paragraph here. Um, the second one is Mechaye Hametim, starting with um, Atagibor, you know, the, you are, uh, 
how do they pronounce it? You are, you are the strong one, you know, forever, forever going to uh, you. And, you know, could say uh, who gives life, who gives life to the dead, um, or uh, who brings life to dead things. And the last one, Hayel Hakadosh, you know, the holy, the holy God. All right, the last, the last three. Uh, starting with um, Modim, you know, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's, we got three, yeah, Modim. Um, Mort, are we supposed to be seeing a different page? Uh, do you see it now? No. Mm -mm. Let me get this. Oh, we still here. see that English page. I thought I could keep both of them up there. Apparently, it took it out. All right, you should see it now. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there's the ending of the Amida, the um, the Modim over here. Okay. The Bechal Hachaim. I'm sorry, the Al Kulam going into the Hachaim, and then Sim Shalom ending up. With Amvarechet Amo Bashalom, Mo Yisrael Bashalom. Now, in many Sidurim at this point, there is a phrase, Yehu the Ratzonim Rafi, Vehegyonli Bilif Anach Anaitsu Riva. Yeah, right here, it's at the bottom. Let me highlight it here. It's, you see it here at the end of the last word of the second last line, the last line. Um, <coughs> we generally have a translation that says, uh, may the words of our mouth and the uh, meditations of our heart be acceptable. Um, Could, I have a question. Could someone uh, let me know what page in the, um, the, the uh, Siddur it, this is on? 44. 44. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, <coughs> in any event, all right, so it says in those two passages, we do not make any uh, changes to, to the text. Um, I'm, I, that, reading that also brought to mind the the uh, issue that you know when we started with the uh, imaot imahot at the beginning of the amida, I know some people that were opposed to it, not on any um, shall we say sociological grounds, but on the fact that it made alterations to the three brachot at the beginning of the amida, and um, and therefore never added it to their davening. Okay, now moving on to what came out this week. Uh, if one wishes to insert numerous or lengthy requests in the Amida, one should do so in the middle of the Shemona Esrei, even in the brachot of Shema Kolenu. Okay, let me go back and show you what that's talking about. So if we have the first three brachot at the beginning, the first three, and then the last three, which we do not do anything, or we don't make any uh, amendments, we're left with the seven brachot in the middle. It's, you know, hoping everybody understands why we call it 18, but we have 19 blessings. Um, no? Um, okay. The, the, initial, the initial Amida, or the time for the Amida, initially was uh, actually just a, a silent time, and there were no, there actually were no fixed prayers. Um, but then the, uh, the question became, what if nobody, what if somebody doesn't know what to say during that time. So they started the practice of the Shuyak Sibur 
uh, reciting a, a, uh, a series of blessings. Uh, this became into our fixed text, evolved into our fixed text that we now have. And then we got into the, uh, the practice of having a time for silent devotion, and then the Shaliyat Sibur repeating the Amida. Um, and then, you know, all the discussion in, in the uh, Talmud and the Mishnah uh, referred to it as the 18, and there was the 18 blessings. And later on, a 19th blessing was added. It was... Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm not sure which one it was, so I'm not going to say more than that. Okay, uh, next week, next week I'll remember which one is which is the 19th. In any event, um, the the um, the paper that I have, you know, is this driving me crazy when I keep, you know, scrolling back and forth? Um, okay. The, they, the first part of the answer was you can add uh, personal prayers into the Amida in this middle section. As a matter of fact, our sitter has one here in this one here, which comes uh, Rafa'enu Adonai, not that one, this one. Uh, I keep getting don't look at the first part. I'm starting over here where my cursor is. Rafainu um, Anunai Bene Rafe, which is asking God to cure people. Uh, this little inserted paragraph that uh, the Sim, it's, you, I've only seen it here in the Sim Shalom, um, but it's a place where we can uh, add uh, names of people who are ill. Uh, you know, and it's very, the language is very similar to the Mishaberach that we use for the sick people. Um, but the committee that put together Sim Shalom indicated, hey, yeah, here, this prayer, which talks about healing, we can add a personal prayer um, right here for, for individuals. But the, uh, I lost it, where'd it go? The, the, um, the paper that I'm reading from, you know, says that if you have a lengthy request, or if you think that it's going to take a while for you to really, uh, or just say a lengthy request, it should be inserted right here in this passage here the Shema Kolenu, which is, you know, hear our prayer, O God. Um, and they say it, uh, it should be added before you get to the actual closing uh, formula, you know, the Shomea Tefillah. You know, it should be summed up, which says, you know, blessed are you, O God, who hears prayer. Um, Sue, so I'm on page 40. Um, so anyway, they indicate that's where it should be. Um, the other, the other um, place that they wanted is a, uh, the closing paragraph. You know, come on, where am I going here? Uh, well, you have Sim Shalom and the, and the blessing, Hamavrechet Hamo Yisrael Ba Shalom. Um, is that, no, oh, said, yeah, and then we have this paragraph, Elohai Nitzor. Um, if one is davening with a minion, that is not part of the uh, recited, the recited repetition by the uh, Shaliyat Sibor, but rather it's meant as a point of individual reflection or meditation uh, to be said by the individual. Uh, then we finish it by, uh, with the Oseh Shalom, you know, taking our three steps backwards and three steps forwards. Okay, now the, 
general thought is if someone wants to um, add additional thoughts or prayers, within this, this passage here is a good time to do it. Mort, do we know when this was added to the, to the Shemona Esrei? Well, I'm assuming it wasn't always part of it, right? No, it was, it was, it was added later. Uh, that's, remind me, I'll look that one up too. Uh, I, I don't have that material here in front of me to give it off. My understanding is it relates to Christianity. All those who think evil of me, let them get killed or whatever. No. Yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking it was probably a, um, you know, a Middle Ages type of thing, um, which, you know, but I, I can double check that. Um, the, the question then comes, um, how long should one take when reciting the Amida with a congregation? Uh, if one would uh, take a lot of time, you know, then the, uh, then the rest of the congregation has to wait for you and that's not really polite. Um, so the rabbis had mixed feelings about that. They, they say if one recites the Amida without a minion, then clearly there's, there's, um, there's no question. If you want to take a, an hour and a half to do it, uh, there's a mission that says one of the rabbis uh, would take so long to do his own personal Amida. Um, it's a, they would, the students would come into the Bet Midrash he would be standing in one corner. And by the time he finished his Amida, he was all the way in a, the other side of the room, you know, just uh, engrossed in his own meditations. But the, uh, and, and that's fine. The question that came up though, is if you're in a, a, a with a minion in a, in a community, a congregation, and you're this davening, and you're in the Amida, which is uh, not only the time for silent reflection, but we, our practice is to do it without, you know, tuning out interruptions. Uh, we don't do any talking of uh, any uh, extraneous matter. Um, we don't uh, get involved in, in, other, in things that would take us away from, the, um, from our, our prayers. Um, so the question comes if we're taking a long time to do this and the rest of the congregation finishes the Amida and they start the repetition and they come to Kedusha, what do you do about responding to the Kedusha? You shouldn't do it. Uh, what if they come to Kaddish? You can't respond to Kaddish either. So they conclude with the minion you don't take so long, you know, just cool it. You got other times you could get all that later. Um, and given that I was going to go into some other text about this, um, but I think given our time right now, um, I'll, I'll uh, take the prerogative and say, we'll deal with that next week. Um, I have a whole series of texts that deal overall with the question of Kabana, but how we should comport ourselves uh, during prayer. But in any event, uh, I pointed out before this, this phrase, Yehi l'ratzonim refi v'agyonli bi l'fanecha, anoy tzuri v'goali. May it be your will, uh, may the, we generally use the, uh, the sentence, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable before you, you know, our, our you know, in the Shema, in the so old Silverman, where we always say, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I'm not sure what most of that means, but hey, it was, it was a good thought. But anyway, uh, traditionally, though, this line has been used. Um, many Sadurim have it right before we get into the uh, high need sore, because Officially, it's the um, end of the Amida. And if one recites that, um, and then uh, it, it comes to the time of Kedusha or Kaddish, 
one may interrupt where he's at at that point, because at that point, you're doing personal uh, reflections and respond to the Kedusha and to the uh, Kaddish. Okay, um, any questions, comments, or schmoozing, anything we want to get into? I just uh, actually a few days ago studied the uh... Uh, the tradition for making personal requests, um, chapter nine of, of Brachot. And you're not allowed um, to request something that's already determined. And uh, for example, if your wife is pregnant, you're not allowed to make a personal request that it be a boy because the sex of a baby is already determined. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're davening in shoal and a fire engine goes by, you're not allowed to say, oh, you know, it shouldn't be my house because the house that's on fire is already determined which house is on fire. The only thing you can do is say, I hope, uh, you know, there isn't too much damage when the house is on fire. Yeah, but and actually, a lot of people say, I hope it's not my fire, my house. Yeah. Um, you know, which is a, a different type of a prayer than, uh, yeah, you know, you know, dear God, don't let it be my house. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, those are the type of things that I have um, that we'll get into next week. Some of those uh, those passages, and may even be on there. I don't have a whole bunch that I found. So, but yeah, that's that's one of the classic, uh, you know, texts from Brachot. You know, or on a on a tangential note, um, as you were teaching, um, it it occurred to me. That uh, that when we're referring to God in the third person, that uh, the use, uh, which has become common, of of using they, uh, is probably incredibly appropriate. You know, the problem is, old habits are very hard to break. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think so, so many of us are just used to saying, well, God, he is. Um, but I, I uh, we will. But this, is, this is one instance where, where um, it's, it's, it's coherent. I mean, it, it could argue that it really makes sense to use now, that. Except, except on the surface, uh, referring to a singular God as they, and, you know, I know yeah. the, they talk about the singular plural, but um, I still, well, I, I still find that hard to completely understand. Um, yeah. I understand the usage, and I understand why some people prefer it, um, but I just don't understand the language. I'll leave it at that, I guess. But but yeah, well, let's uh, let's try to do it. But I'm not. I I can't guarantee it. I mean, look, we do it so automatically. That even to correct ourselves to say he or she uh, is uh, is an effort, right? Oh. Thanks, Mort. Yasher Koch. On my, my way Where's out more? right you. now. Bluchim <laughs> <laughs> ah! right. to say one thing, Mort. Um, when you were talking in the beginning about um, about the bris and yeah. about getting upset about not, you know, doing the uh, the kiddush, you know, sometimes I reflect on that that you get so sidetracked and worrying about something that you miss the moment. So, like, you know, when one of my friends. Her son was getting married and she was upset and this one and that one and the daughter-in-law to be. And I said, you know, you're, you're missing the moment. So I think sometimes, you know, we can miss really special moments. So, and get um, sidetracked. You know, that's one of the arguments that I have with orthodoxy in general, um, in that they get so fixated on the nuts and bolts of what should be done, what should be recited, when should it be recited, um, that they really very often overlook 
um, the total picture of what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it and what we're supposed to get out of it. Um, anybody here like the art school, Sidurum? Okay, no, I'm gonna well, say it. I think it's good. I'm going to say it anyway. But what I don't like about the art scroll is their fixation on this type of thing. Uh, you know, you look at some of the comments. If you forgot to say this at the, at you know way back then, several pages back. Okay, now say it here. You know, say something different here, um, and, and that type of back and forth. Uh, is it really that critical that we have the precise wording of everything in the center? Um, which I think- oh, It's just giving permission. You know, if somebody is going and he forgot to do something, and he says, oh my God, what do I do? Well, instead of, you know, instead of like uh, doing it now, he looks and he sees, oh, I have permission, I, I can do it. Right, I, you know, we can explain it that way but why should we be worried in the first place? You know, if you got that, forgot a, a word, okay, you forgot a word. You know, you, you know, you oh, when I did the when I did the Misha Berich for Chalim just now, and during the service just now, I left out an entire line by accident. You know, okay. I figured, what the hell? You know, does God understand? If if God if God knows what's in our heart, then we got to say yes. Yeah. You know, what's our intent? You know, where, where are we going here with this? And, um, no, but I think in general, you know, we uh, get so hung up, uh, or some people get hung up on uh, what word comes where, or uh, I remember a couple years ago, we had a, a guy came to our meeting frequently, um, and insisted on Tisha B'Av that we have the full repetition of the Amida so we could say the paragraph that's yeah. been recited by the Shaliach Sibor and the repetition of the Milch. I think it was a Milcha, right? Remember it was David? Yeah, well, well he, he had other issues too. He didn't want well, a Levi to do the Haftorah for, yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. But, for that or for, you know. And the, but he wanted a repetition well, because he had well, Don't guess what? The book of Jonah. Last year, I led the I led the uh, shachri, I think it was for Tisha B'av, and Abe insisted that I had to read the repetition of the Amida just so I could say that paragraph. Yeah, maybe. Right. yeah. Well, for shachri, you know, yeah, you know, we we go because, but there's another one that's added at Milcha, so he 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 brought to the religious committee, and the religious committee had a you know, pass it that, you know, on Milcha Tisha B'Av, we would repeat the full of me. But uh, he was a very nice guy and his, uh, I still see him on Facebook. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, you know, um, not abusing him. I'm just pointing that out. Uh, do, do you remember the time, Mort, uh, not to abuse him, but this is funny, when, when he, uh, he was a little upset because we did a, uh, an abridged uh, benching uh, after Kiddush, and he came over to me and said, you're, you're chair of the ritual committee, why did we do an abridged benching? I said, I think that's a question for a rabbi. And Rabbi Stone walked by just then, and he said, Rabbi Stone, why did, why did we just do an abridged benching? And Rabbi Stone thought, he said, because it's shorter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, and he also got very upset if anybody closed the door to the closet and and the chapel on Shabbat. Yeah, you know, because when you open the door, it turns on the light. Oh. But, but this this all raises another issue, which which I hesitate to bring up now. Maybe we can talk about it next time. But but looking at these rules about when you can add a personal prayer during a private prayer, um, it seems to me a case of people who know no more about God or how to communicate with God telling the rest of us, here's how to communicate with God. And I find that the height of presumptuousness. Just saying. Um, just saying, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, 
No, I, I, you know, I deep down, I think there's really several points here. I think that the, a lot of this is coming from a time when there was a, uh, you know, certainly a, uh, the literacy was quite high. Um, people were, people are just not in tune to what's going on inside the shul or yeshiva. And the rabbi said, well, hey, we have to have a way of teaching it. But um, I remembered the other incident that I wanted to tell you about. It actually happened several years ago. Um, we had an interfaith uh, session up at uh, the Catholic ceremony. What is it? Uh, up on City Line in Lancaster, Borneo? Something Borneo. Uh, it says Borneo. Borneo. Borneo, yeah. Borneo. Um, it was a, the Board of Rabbis was having a, had a program uh, with the people from that seminary and um, some other Christian organizations. It was a very interesting day of learning. But at, uh, at one point, the, uh, they wanted to start off one session. I think it was the main plenary. And um, one of the speakers, I should say, the, the Jewish representative speaker was Rabbi Yitz Greenberg. Um, he was a great speaker. He was a great speaker, a very prominent. Uh, well, I would even consider him one of the uh, originators of what we now refer to as modern orthodoxy. Um, and you know, a, a very, very nice man. They called upon him to offer a prayer at the beginning of the, um, the session. And I uh, remember him, I was sitting, you know, like a row behind him. And when they did that, uh, he did not have advance warning. And I remember him getting up and saying, I'm not very good at spontaneous prayer. Um, which, which was true, you know, most of us in terms of um, formal sessions like that, you know, that's, that's not our way. And uh, um, I know that when I was uh, usually called upon to do that type of thing, uh, I got to the, into the practice of, no, I'm not doing an opening prayer. I'm going to do a little to our Torah. Uh, and, you know, and especially since, uh, you know, study is a form of prayer, I, I knew it was justified. But, but yeah, you know, getting back to what you said, Art, um, can we really, you know, ultimately, can we really tell other people how they should pray, uh, what words they should use, how they should do it, uh, for the sake of, um, maybe I would say for the sake of decorum within a congregational setup, we can have points where it's a, appropriate to add some personal reflections. But if you're daydreaming now and adding your own personal reflections as I talk, hey, I can't stop you. You know, and I'd probably be best if I don't know about it too. So it's okay. Okay. Before I get to babbling too much, uh, maybe we should. Uh, Thank you very much, Mort. Have a good day. Thanks, Mort. Thank you. Thank to you, everybody. Have a good day. Um, we put in, Mort, we put in the chat box about the 19th blessing. Uh, no, we're going to do it. We'll talk about it next week. No, but I just want you to know that Doug and I put some information oh. in about the 19th blessing. Okay. I just wanted you to see it. That's all. Bye now, everybody. Have a great day, everyone. Okay. Yeah, Shakoa, oh. Mort. Okay, yeah. So which one is it? Me and Doug, the last I two. Know, but, uh, 19th yeah. blessing is, after mentioning God's kindness to us, we beseech God to continue to bless us and be gracious unto us. Uh, <laughs> I got to see the Hebrew. Uh, that's not well, good. then then click on Doug's link in the chat box. Yeah, well, no, I, I got the, okay, yeah. It's what it's, Did you click on Doug's link? Yeah, I got that too.
Great. Now I got so many you know, pages up here. Here we go. Um, well, let's hope today is a great day for somebody we're not mentioning oh. their names. Oh, Natalie, we forgot to announce that that Star of David is still is reopened. Yeah. <laughs> David, put that in the econ someplace. <laughs> okay. No, we're not we're kidding. About. We're not kidding. Do you know what we're talking about? The coach. Oh, yeah. Restaurant? Yeah, they just yeah. opened. Great, great uh, falafel. We thought they were closed, but we walked by it last night, and boy, was that shawarma good. Mm -hmm. That's great. So. Okay.